Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escapier Online and welcome to our session this morning. Today we're going to be decorating the fondant cake that we covered last week. But before we do our cake, we're going to be talking about the contest. We launched the contest yesterday on October 1st and the questions for the contest are posted on the student portal right on the home page near the top. They're going to be posted every day. If you need any help finding them, be sure to give us a call at 877-452-5489. Your culinary mentor is number one, bacon and pastry number two, and technical support is number three. So back to the questions. There's going to be a different amount of questions with a different value every day. So no worries, if you miss a day logging in, you won't fall behind. You could even get the daily double bonus and catch up to everyone with just one question. So if you have any questions on the questions, be sure to let us know. And you're gonna be typing in your answers for some of these questions and some of them are multiple choice. No worries, we're gonna be checking the typed in questions. So if your spelling isn't exact and it's very close, you'll still be getting your question right. So join in on the fun. It's a great contest. And the first prize for the contest is going to be this KitchenAid food processor. Black in color. It's really nice. So you can use it for grating vegetables and cheeses. And you can uh, make your sousa topping in here for your muffins or your pie if you like. Great for grating your carrots for your carrot cake or any vegetables. Super nice piece of equipment. It's really powerful. It's nice for home use. It's not too big. You can tuck it away. So have fun with the contest and please let us know if we can help you in any way. Okay, so let's get started on our fondant cake. Let's put this out of the way. Okay, so I've got the fondant cake from last week. What I did is I just, I wrapped it really good in the refrigerator. I kind of triple wrapped it. I kind of tucked in the plastic. I had it in a box, so it stayed just fine. And um, it's just a little bit tacky on top, but you can easily store your fondant cakes in your refrigerator. If it's a really wet refrigerator, you want to be mindful of that, but you can definitely store them overnight or for a few days just wrapping them really well. So we're going to be decorating this cake. And we're going to be decorating this with, um, we're going to be making a loop bow on the top and then we'll just be putting some round decorations around the side. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be coloring our fondant. And we talked about this in the past weeks, how to color the fondant. So I've got the fondant from last week. And if you're making your full batch in one color, you can go ahead and add your coloring right to the mixture in the beginning, or you can just kind of uh, knead it in a little bit, which is what we're going to be doing today. Whenever I'm coloring my fondant, I always wear my gloves so I don't um, get the color on my hands and move it around. So we're going to be making a nice blue. I have some blue liquid paste here that I'm just kind of dipping this in. And I like to do my colors just a little bit at a time. And this way I don't get them too dark. can always add a little bit more color. It's a little bit harder. If your color's too strong, you'll have to add a little bit more of white, a little bit more white fondant, but that's okay. And our dough is just a little sticky. And I have my powdered sugar and cornstarch mixture that I made that I rolled out the dough with. So we're just going to be using a little bit of this. We're going to make a nice light blue color. And does anyone have any questions so far? And do you have any questions on the contest? So please let me know. The contest is going to run until the end of the month and we'll be announcing the winners after the week of October 31st. So right after Halloween, we'll be announcing the winners. And be sure to contact us along the way. And although you're going to be working on your contest individually, you can still reach out to some of your fellow students if you need any help on some questions. So that's where your friending comes in handy. You could reach out to some friends that you made on the student portal. And remember to make a friend on the student portal. You just click on their picture 
and the next page will show a little tab for a friend to request and you just click on that and you wait to hear from your future friend. Okay, so this is just about ready to go. This is a nice light color blue. And like I said, I'm just um, kind of kneading in the color, just mixing it by hand. It went really fast, it was really easy. I recommend for the fondant using the paste colors, but you can use your liquid color, color so it'll work just fine. And I have some blue stuck to my gloves, which would probably be, probably be stuck to my hands. That's why it's great to use gloves, especially if you're touching a white cake after you're gonna be doing this. Okay, so our fondant is ready to go. So we're not gonna be rolling out the whole piece at once. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making some of our loops for the bowl. So the fondant is just a little sticky today. It's kind of humid here, a rainy morning. So go ahead and use your powdered sugar or your cornstarch or your combination of both mixture. And you can easily just brush off the excess. It's better to have a little bit excess than have things sticking. Okay. So we're rolling out our fondant. We're going to be rolling it into a strip. And I'm checking every now and then to be sure that it's not stuck on the bottom. And do we have any questions so far on anything? Okay, I'm rolling this to about a sixteenth of an inch. Well, actually it's about an um, eighth of an inch and then I kind of go down to like a three sixteenth, not quite a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some of our loop bows and does anyone have any questions on anything so far? Okay, let's dust off some of this powdered sugar mixture. We're gonna go ahead and dust off the bottom a little bit too. I'm gonna turn it over and we're gonna kind of Brush off some of this excess. And then we're going to clean up our board. And please send me some pictures or post on the student portal some of your fondant cakes. They're super fun to make. You'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family with these cakes. Okay, so we're going to be making a few strips for our loop bows. Okay, I usually cut my strips in between four and a half and six inches, depending on the size of the loop that you're making for your bow. And I usually cut them about an inch wide. Okay, so now we're going to be forming our loop bow, and we have a question. What is the shelf life for a cake covered with fondant? The question is, what is the shelf life for a cake covered with fondant? You can keep your fondant cake in the refrigerator for a few days, depending on how moist your refrigerator is, and it really depends on what you filled the cake with. If it's just a buttercream cake, you can keep it for maybe be, maybe um, about up to a week. But if you're doing a mousse filling, you're gonna wanna just keep it for a few days. Okay. So I'm turning these over because I have my powdered sugar and um, my powdered sugar side facing up. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just putting a little bit of water to make this tacky just so the loop sticks together. You can brush it on or you can put it on with your fingers. Okay, then we're gonna be pulling this over and we're just gonna be pinching the end. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up just like this 
And you can make your loops any size you want. You could make them um, thinner or smaller depending on the size bow that you're making. And you're typically going to make in between 12 and 18 pieces. Always make a few extra in case there's any breakage. What you're going to do is you're going to put it on a sheet pan or um, a pan that you've got some wax paper or some parchment paper or a sole pad just so it doesn't stick. You're going to put it on a pan like this and you're going to leave the loops dry at the very least overnight, keeping letting them dry for one to two days is ideal, especially in more humid climates. You're going to find that these bows are going to take a little bit longer to dry. So these are our loops. We're just squeezing them together they'll be ready to use tomorrow. Okay. So we have our loop set up. And now we're going to be cutting some discs out of the rest of this. We got a little bit of water on here. I have a little high side over here. So we're going to be making some cutouts and we're also going to be putting these on our cake when we're ready to decorate our fondant covered cake. And do we have any questions so far on making the bow loops? Okay, so I have some cutters and this is the cutter set from the toolkit. If you don't have it, any cutters are going to work. So I'm just going to be cutting out some round discs. And then we're going to be putting these on the side of the cake. This is a super easy cake to make and you don't need um, really very many tools. If you don't have round cutters, like I said, you can use any shape or size you like. You can even cut the fondant into squares too. So. You really don't need any tools to make this cake except for a rolling pin. And you can also um, use a knife instead of a pizza rolling cutter like I used. And we have another question. The question is, is would the fondant be better if it were mixed 50-50 with gum paste? Gum paste is a little more sturdy and a little um, more stable, and I don't think it's quite as pliable as the fondant, but you can definitely try it, especially if you need something that's just a little bit more stable. But be careful when you're bending that because it does have a tendency to crack. Okay, so I've got some nice discs cut out here so far. And did we have any other questions? So we're going to be decorating our fondant cake soon. So take your time on your cakes. Have a lot of fun with them. You'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family. Like I said, you could make this cake easily with um, not very many tools at all. So there are some tools and um, cutouts and molds that you can use for fondant and we'll be showing those next week but the simple cake you can make it just by using some things that are in your own kitchen so that's what's nice about this you'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family okay so i think we've got enough cutouts to go ahead and get started with the cake and do we have any questions on anything so far okay what we're going to do is we're going to be assembling the loop bow first. I've got a little bit of fondant left over. You can just cover this with plastic and save it. Okay, so we've got our cake. Okay, for the loop bow, we're going to be assembling this loop bow right on the cake. But you can also assemble these ahead of time. You can take a piece of wax paper and put some royal icing on the wax paper. Royal icing is typically made with powdered sugar and egg whites and a little bit of cream of tartar. You're going to whip it up until it's kind of like a toothpaste consistency. And you can put some royal icing on a piece of wax paper, assemble your bowl, you can leave it dry, and then it's going to be ready to put on a cake anytime that you're ready to use it. 
or you can assemble your bow right on the cake like I'm going to be doing today. I'm just going to be putting some buttercream icing. This is going to help hold all of those loops in shape in place and then it's going to um, kind of fill in any gaps too that you may be seeing. Okay, so I've got some loops that I made last night that are pretty well dry. And I typically use the larger ones on the bottom. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be going around and placing our loops on the cake. And I'm doing them side by side. I like to place my loops with um, the smooth side up but you can also place them like this on the cake for a little bit of a change up, make your bow look um, just a little bit more natural. And do we have any questions on assembling the bow on the cake? So the pinch sides, if you find out that you have a piece that's not fitting just right when you start doing this top, you can go ahead and cut off some of the pinch sides. You can kind of shave them a little bit and that's gonna help with the assembly. Okay, so we have a really nice start for our bow. It's really beautiful blue. These are just a little bit soft still. They're holding their shape fine, but I have to be careful not to break them. That's why it's good to make a few extras because you just never know. And um, these set up overnight. They set up really well, but I do recommend leaving them dry for just a few days, especially if you're in a warmer climate. So what you're going to be doing is you're just going to be putting your bow loops on. Do it one layer at a time. Kind of save one of those nice round ones for the center. And if you need to trim it up, you can. And then we have one that fits perfectly in the center. So this is our loop bow on our cake for today. See how easy it was to make. You'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be putting some of the round discs around the outside. I'm gonna be putting this on the cake wheel for this. Kind of dust off our table a little bit here. Okay, do we have any questions so far? Okay, so we're going to be placing some of our round discs on the cake. We're going to kind of just do this randomly. And we're going to be using just a little bit of water to make these, um, these discs kind of tacky. And then we're just going to be sticking them on the cake. Kind of a little bit randomized. Just make sure it's stuck on there. They shouldn't fall off at all. I like to start with the bigger ones and then I move to the smaller ones to fill in. So like I said, this is a super cute cake that you can make with hardly any special tools in your kitchen. You can, um, can brush this water on with a brush and there is also a product that's um, kind of a fondant glue that they sell that you can use for this, but water works just fine. You just want to make these tacky, just a little bit of water, just to get it to stick on the cake. And do we have any questions on our fondant cake today? So it's kind of fun. It's a relaxing thing to do. So take your time with your fondant cakes. You'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family. And please give me a call. If you have any questions or if you need any help or if you have any suggestions. So I'm hoping to see some fondant cakes coming up on the student portal. We saw a few last week, some really cute ones. There's just so many things that you can do with your fondant. Be sure that you're joining us next week because I'm going to be showing some more decorations. So our fondant cake is almost complete. I'm going to be putting some of these smaller dots on. These are great too for kids because they can kind of join in on putting some of these decorations on and they really like it too. They're easy to handle for them and it's not too hard. So you've got some kids that can help with your fondant discs on your cake too, you can kind of make it a little family cake. So 
nice blue color. Keep in mind when you're making um, those darker colors, fondant's gonna be a little bit more sticky. Always try to stay away from those too, unless you have someone that really wants a darker colored cake and you have to make it for them. Try to stick with these lighter colors. You'll have better luck. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put some of these smaller pieces on. And our fondant cake is just about done. See how quickly it went? We decorated the, the whole cake in almost 20 minutes time. I had the loops ready ahead of time. And we have another question. The question is, what kind of cake is this? It's a yellow cake with buttercream filling. It doesn't have any mousse in it. It's been in the fridge for about a week since last week, and um, it was wrapped up really well. So this is our cake. So just an idea for the bottom. I've got a little bit of fondant left over. You can do little pearls around the bottom like this, or you can just do some buttercream piping to finish off your cake. So I like the look of the pearls. They're fun to make. You can make the pearls up ahead of time too as well. And you can just kind of place them around the bottom of your cake. It gives it a super cute, when you add these little pearls, it adds almost a whimsical kind of look. And these fondant cakes are great for making those offset whimsical kind of Alice in Wonderland type of cakes. So please let me know if you have any questions. I'm just gonna make a few more of these pearls. And if we don't have any more questions, we're gonna say our goodbyes till next week. We'll be making some more fondant decorations and we have another question. The recipe for the fondant is on the Escoffier, um, it's on the website. If you go to the archives and you look under the, um, the video playlist, you'll see making fondant. What you're gonna wanna do is go to the bottom right and there's a YouTube link. So go ahead and click on that and it's gonna take you to the next page. And then when you get to the next page, you'll see the Escoffier link and you can click on that to find the recipe. However, if you're not able to find it, be sure to give me a call or send me an email. You can reach me at swolak at escoffieronline.com. So please call me or email me anytime. I'm here waiting to help you guys out and let me know if you have any questions, and I really, really want to see some fondant cakes on the forum. So you could just make a small cake like this, a small 8-inch cake. You can even make a 6-inch cake or a square. The um, square cakes make beautiful um, bow box cakes, too, as well. And as you can see, the cake is really shaping up with the pearls around the side. So thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you next week for some fondant decorations, okay? And be sure to join in on the contest and let us know how you're doing. Have a great week and we'll see you next Thursday.